Heather actually gave me the title for uh, my message here a few weeks ago. Uh, I don't even remember how it came about. I was talking about something. And, uh, I came up with uh, I came up with some sort of statement about not letting anyone write the lyrics of your life. I was reminded, you know, we, we listened to Casting Crowns, and uh, I was reminded of a song that they wrote uh, back in the, the early 2000s uh, called Life Song. Uh, and lyrically, the words are uh, so powerful to it. When it says, empty hands held high, such a small sacrifice. If not joined with my life, I sing in vain tonight. We're going to talk about that a little bit uh, this morning. We're going to talk about the title of the message today. Don't let anyone write the lyrics of your life song. It's your song. It's your story to tell. It's your life to live. Don't let someone else who has no part or no parcel in the story of your life write the lyrics to the song that you're going to live. Amen? Amen? Never will forget uh, in all the times that we've seen Casting Crowns, and I cannot even tell you how many times we have seen them uh, at this point live and in concert. But I always enjoy standing next to my beautiful wife, and uh, as she lifts the lyrics to that song, I'm always reminded that whenever we go see them, it says, I want to sign your name to the end of this day. That she does this little cursed Jesus. <clears throat> Puts an exclamation at the end of it. And I said, man, that's the way we need to live our lives. We need to live our lives like our life song uh, that we are living for Jesus and we're spelling it out with an exclamation point at the end. We become so wishy-washy, so mealy-mouthed, so limp wrist, so lukewarm in the culture that we call the church today that we literally, literally become of no effect and no good to most of the darkened world in which we exist and live in. Now, that's not every church. That's not every individual, but let me tell you something, just when you think your life song is powerful enough and you are marching on in the victory and the glory of Christ Jesus, watch out, because you ain't done nothing yet. You ain't done nothing yet. And when I think about that, I think about why are we that way? How did we get in this state? How did we get in this condition? In a cancel culture society that we've allowed ourselves as Christians to be canceled out. Our voices have been quieted. People don't hear us anymore, church. They don't want to hear us anymore. Because the church has been so hypocritical, so backwards, so inconsistent in living the word of God, why would anybody? And the main reason that we are in the state of the condition that we are in, folks, is because of just what the title says. We have let too many people write the lyrics to our song. There are some of you in here today that have accepted the fact that you're institutionalized. You are waiting for the opportunity right now to get yourself locked back up and thrown into an institution. You're waiting on it. Because someone somewhere told you that you were institutionalized. That you'll never be able to live outside of the confines of a prison. Hogwash! My nephew sitting here in the third row today spent most of his, and not unlike most of our family, most of his youth and young adult life in prison. Locked up. And I know that there was a time and a point and a place where he felt like he could not live outside of an institution. Because every time he'd take two steps forward, bam, something in the world would write another lyric, another verse to his song and knock him three steps back. You heard the old joke about the 
country song, right? You know, uh, if you play a country album backwards, you get your truck back, your dog back, your wife back, your house back. Because every country song, they lose everything. There's a tear in my beer, you know? It's miserable, man. And yet we let people dictate it. They listen in a very real sense. We take music today. Music is so powerful that we apply it and the lyrics that are written about it to our lives. Hey, let me tell you something. Pick a slick a slick a snicker. Shady. They ain't no gangsters in Bedford. <laughs> and yet we have droop pants, cocked hat, little smart mouths running around in the community like they gonna roll up and gang bust somebody. <laughs> what are you gonna do? You gonna hit poor old Mimo when she out there working in her flower garden? <laughs> pow, pow, pow! <laughs> Show her plant them tulips. <laughs> Ridiculous, the things that we think and we identify with literally in music. Literally in music. We are captivated by it. We take it in. I had a guy one time. I had his good friend. Hey, Heather, you'll remember this. Every time this song would come on, he'd say, The room got about my life. Desperado. <laughs> I said, Man, you ain't even got a horse, dude. You ain't got to fill the farm to ride one in if you did have it. You ain't ever been desperate for nothing. Your mom and daddy give you everything that you ever wanted in life. Desperado. They wrote that about me. No, they didn't. You weren't even born when they wrote that song. Don't be an idiot. We become so captivated with the lyrics to other people's lives. To the things that they've written because we can't identify with some things but folks let me tell you something that's their song that's their lyrics they're writing down about their situation and their circumstance and even though you can identify with some of those things God created you for the purpose of writing your own song your own life song your own lyric don't let someone else write the lyrics to your life just because somebody tells you that you're institutionalized and that you'll never be able to live outside of the confines of a prison, that's a lie. Yeah. Let me tell you what it took. It took one service. One service and a little bit of humility. Yeah. And when humbleness came and met with Christ Jesus, that same individual they said was institutionalized and would never be able to live outside of a facility. His anger was too bad. His temper was too great. He cannot live unless he's cuffed and stuffed and incarcerated. And yet, almost out of that same pew, he gingerly and tenderly walked to this altar and he fell on his face before a holy and errant infallible God did change the lyrics of his life. <laughs> so much so that we congratulated him Wednesday night. For those of you uh, that weren't here, my beautiful nephew and his beautiful fiance, Heaven, are officially engaged and getting married in September. Congratulations. I'm gonna die, hon. I ain't ever get tied down to no chick. <laughs> but guess what? You got help in writing the lyrics to your song now, son. <laughs> you got a ghostwriter, a companion that writes alongside you. And she does a much better job in writing the lyrics for the two of you than you do. <laughs> so we're just gonna roll with her song. <laughs> Don't let anyone write the lyrics of your life. It's crazy, and yet we do that every day. There are some of you in here, you've been to too many stupid AA, too many stupid NA classes where they have told you throughout your life, you've been to too many counselors, too many facilities where they have pointed their finger in your face and said,
said, what, you're an addict? You're always an addict. You're always going to be an addict. You're always going to be a drunk. You're always going to be a dumb. No, you're not. Don't let them write those lyrics into the story of your life. You're a product of your choices. Change your choices, you change the lyrics. You don't have to be an addict forever. You can give up, get out, and go with the baby another direction. You can change the lyrics of the song of your life. Yeah. Your life song can be one of becoming a Christian, an ex-drug addict, uh, an ex-alcoholic. Doesn't mean that you won't make mistakes. Doesn't mean that there won't be times that you have those hiccups in your lyrics. But God has this uh, ultimate eraser Amen. that even when we mess up the lyrics we can go back and start over again in that verse <laughs> I don't want the meds out. do you know that's what good songwriters do yeah. I mean there's those freaks that write an entire song on the back of an envelope in 15 minutes there's a tear in my eye <laughs> woo huh the gravity of those lyrics. But most songwriters sit down and they contemplate and they think. And they take their vernacular and their vocabulary and they apply it to a count, to a beat, to a rhythm, to a cadence, to a sound, to a song. And they begin to pin. And if they don't like what they pin, they wad it up on the trash. Erase it. Remove it. You know, so that's what God does for the lyrics of our life. That when we've made our greatest mistakes, when we have uh, contemplated and failed and created our greatest failures, God sent His Son Christ Jesus to say, hey, let me erase that. Let me remove it. All the world will remember it. There'll be some people that will never give you another shake in life. They've heard your song. The way you first played it. And that's all they'll ever hear again. They won't hear as you become a better musician. As you become better vocally. As you take singing lessons. And music lessons. And you learn how to harmonize with the rest of the world. And all of a sudden you can carry a tune in the bucket. All they remember is that guy that just crowed. Every time he opened his mouth. But God doesn't remember. Right. That's right. God doesn't remember that. And isn't it amazing when we look into the Word of God that God would even refer so much to the praise that we offer up? So much so that He said, just make a joyful noise. He said, I don't know how to make a joyful noise. God does for you. Just lift up your voice, right. write your own song. And watch how God will make something beautifully orchestrated Amen. out of it. So, in the Word of God, in the book of Psalms, the 146 Psalms says this because I've got to give you some word. Amen. I can't just sit here and preach in and of myself. I've got to give you what the scriptures say. And so, in the 146 Psalm, it says, Praise you, the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Listen to verse 3. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the sons of men in whom there is no help. But put your trust in the Son of God. Where you can change the lyrics of your life. There's some of you that, like myself, you've made miserable mistakes when you were young. They've haunted you. They've followed you. And even after you've known Christ as Lord and Savior, you've trampled His blood under your feet. I've done it. I've done it. Thank you, brother. It's honesty. I didn't get elected to an office that I already held as an incumbent uh, because I think that, for lack of a better way to put it, the Republican Party doesn't respect me anymore because I had something tarnished or black or dark that I went through in my life. 
at a time when my lyrics got messed up. And it took me being humble and crushed to get my pen back out and say, God, I need you to erase this. We gotta rewrite some stuff. Amen. I'm not gonna give up. I'm not gonna quit, Lord. Because you created me to sing a life song. And I'm gonna keep on singing. As long as you give me somebody that'll listen, Lord, I'll keep on belting it out. And lo and behold, look what we do week in and week out. We're gonna minister the word of God yeah. in spite of ourselves. Yeah. Because we didn't give up, because we didn't quit, because we know who the author and the finisher of our faith is. Because we know who it is that's pinning the lyrics to our life song. Don't let someone else write the lyrics of your life. As you go over to 2 Timothy, I can find it here in my own Bible. You guys have to forgive me, this is a new Bible. I'm doing pretty well with it, but still got a lot to learn in it. In 1 Timothy, the second chapter, verse 8, it says this. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and without doubting. Isn't it amazing that when we think about that life song, song of Casting Crowns, wrote, they, the, 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 the very initial thing that they talk about is empty hands that are held high. It's such a small sacrifice if it's not joined with your life. If your song doesn't compliment this, this is just nonsense. Just like anything else in the church. If you feel like you've got the gift of tongues, you've got... But it don't coordinate with the song of your life. It's Come just psychobabble. Right. Nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> they want to hear people who are doing things godly and are instructed by the Lord. But I want to tell you something. Man, when you see someone lift up holy hands yes. and you know the Spirit of God is moving and He's writing the lyrics to their life. Yeah. Oh, it's powerful. It's such a small sacrifice. I wonder why more people don't just lift up holy hands in church. I think it's because, they, 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 I think for some they don't know, but for others, they're kind of embarrassed or ashamed. You know, you get the ones that... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, serving up a little Jesus, man. Uh, Man, when God really begins to direct and change the song in your life, man, you can lift up holy hands without wrath and without doubting and know that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is on your side. God, I praise you. I praise you in this storm. I praise you in this life. I praise you in the good times and in the bad times. God, this is such a small sacrifice, but I want my life to be lined up with it. I want to live for you. I don't want to fail you. I don't want to do the things that I've done in my past. And I definitely do not want to let anyone else write the story of the song of my life. Amen. So simple. Simple to worship God. Simple to praise God. It goes on in 2 Corinthians. And this is where the scriptures get a little lengthy. I may jump around here a little bit, Dale. But it says in the 12th chapter, verse 18, But now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him, as it hath pleased God. He's writing the lyrics, the song to life. Verse 19, And if there were all one member were the body, if we are the body, why aren't our arms reaching? Why aren't our hands healing? Why aren't our feet going? Because we've let somebody else write the lyrics to the song of our life. When God has said, plain and simple, and the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Verse 22 says, Nay, much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Big toes, valuable. You may not feel like it, but man, we'll tell you what, you try to climb something, keep your balance. Uh, stub it real good when it ain't there. Just catch yourself on the bone of a knuckle. All out of balance because you ain't got a big toe. 
It felt like a big toe ain't important, but big toes are important. And so are little piggies. They're all important. They're all important. Verse 23 says, And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. Verse 24 says, For the comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to the part which lack. Verse 25, That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. That song. Look how beautifully orchestrated God created us. Even as we spoke Wednesday night, little Abigail, born without two of the most valuable things that we take for granted. And yet, in the song of her life that God is writing, her hearing surpasses everyone in this room. She can hear a pin drop on that couch back there in the foyer. You see, when God writes our song, sometimes the things that we don't see in our lyrics are, are aggravating because they're not there because that's the way we would write our song. But Abigail's already touching lives all over the world. All over the world, people send her messages every day, gifts, ask about her, want to know how she's doing. She's got a song that her little life is playing out. Yes. And as parents even, sometimes we go back and say, oh man, if I could change it, I would. Or if I could go back and do this, I would. I'm sure that when the alarms go off and the buzzers are beeping and vibrating vests and trachs and eye salve and glass eyes and Jay Lee's wore out, man. Plus cutting timber every day in the heat, trying to provide for his family. I'm sure there are days he's probably said, man, I wish I was just went the other way. But if it did, then it'd be Jason writing her life song and not God. And we can't let Jason write the life song of her life. Even though he's her daddy, he can contribute he can be involved in the songwriting process. He's got to learn to trust God and allow God to create the lyrics that are going to create a life beautiful that is going to reach people all over the world. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and so, Dell's got music up. That's good because we're about done here. And I believe, well, where are we going? James? In James chapter 1, verse 22, I know it's a lot of scripture this morning, but you need to hear this. But be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. There's the biggest problem that we have in our culture today. Everybody wants to hear the song that God has created. But nobody wants to dance to it. Nobody wants to live it out. Nobody wants to recognize that the lyrics of that song have been written about you. And that's why we lift up holy hands without wrath, without doubting. And so I have three things to remember to honor God in your life song. Number one, check your heart. Not just your physical one. But that one's way deep down. Ten miles deep down in there. Yeah. You know the one that makes you rattle? Right. When you lose somebody you love so much. You never thought you could cry that hard. You never thought you could experience a pain that hurt that bad. And yet there it is. It's been within you the whole time. So God allows you to write that lyric song check your heart because the Bible says that the sun rises on the just and the unjust and chance and circumstance happens to each and every one of us we did not celebrate but we memorialized the loss of my niece this past week 21 years old right before her 21st birthday 
taken out of this life much too soon. decisions, bad choices, not allowing God to control the lyrics of our life allows us to write a song that may not only cost us our life, but it may cost somebody else theirs too. Sorry. It breaks my heart. Check your heart. Please check your heart. Make sure God's writing the lyrics to the song that you're living. Don't let the person sitting next to you. Don't let your employer. Don't let your pastor. You let the holy and inerrant word of God and the Holy Spirit help you pen the lyrics to your life. And I promise you, it'll be a hit. It'll climb the billboard charts. Everybody will want to hear it. Because it'd be true. It'd be the story of your life. Yeah. Number two, this is probably the most important aspect for sure after we check our heart. Ask God for forgiveness. Quit going through the motions and the routine. Hey, listen. I love having you all here. What would I do if you weren't? I'd sit here and preach to a bunch of confused. I would do it. I would. I'm that goofy. I'd be like, well, God, you called me here. Could you bring somebody in? How ridiculous would that be? But if God calls me to do it, I'm going to do it. Because I'm going to check my heart. And even when I fail, I'm going to remember secondly to ask God for forgiveness. God have mercy on me, a sinner. God forgive me for every time I've trampled your blood under my feet. God forgive me for all the times I've let others down. God forgive me for all the times I've let someone else pin a verse to my song that you wanted to write for me. So check your heart and ask God for forgiveness. And then finally, you get over to the book of John, the fourth chapter, verse 24. I won't go there, but it says, let us honor God not only with our words, but with our whole life. And a sweet aroma of worship will reach the throne of God. Become that sweet smelling savor. Learn to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Stand with me today. I love each and every one of you. I don't know who's been pinning the lyrics to your song. But I know this, it's time for you to take back over the pen put it in the hands of the one that can properly write the song of your life and that comes to knowing Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior if you don't know him as Savior today so first thing you have to do you have to check your heart do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior with every head bowed and every eye closed just real quickly I want to do this today I uh, just felt like the Spirit of God just jumped on me uh, to ask you to do this Nobody's looking around. Nobody's trying to embarrass you today. I'm not going to come and grab you by the hand and drag you to an altar today uh, because I know I'm already after the hour lower than I should be. But anyone here today that just say, I I'm ready to let God write the lyrics to the song of my life. I'm ready to be forgiven. Just put up, look at hand. I see that 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 hand. Wow. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. With those uplifted hands today, I see that hand. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Such a small sacrifice. That hand, just extend it upward right now. 
And if you can repeat after me, you can do it quietly, you can do it verbally, you can really need to do it yourself. Don't let me sing your song, write your lyrics. You talk to God, just like you talk to me or anybody else. And simply say, God, this is a small sacrifice I'm making. But I have my hand lifted upward in hopes that in doing so, I can find forgiveness through the blood of Christ Jesus that was shed for my sins. Forgive me for every wrong I've committed, every bad thing I've ever done. Come into my heart, come into my life. Save me. I'm extending my hand because I want you to reach out and get a hold of me, God. Pull me out of this mess. Pull me out of this mire and this muck that I've been living in. Take me, Lord, and utilize me and use me that I can begin to rewrite the lyrics of my life. Because I've let others write them for far too long. I believe you to do that today. I thank you for your forgiveness. And as every hand goes down, I'm going to put mine over my heart. I'm going to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your love, for your mercy, for your kindness. Thank you that you're always willing help me be more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. To be an overcomer. To be set aside. And to help me rewrite the lyrics of the song of my life. For that always Lord, as you take us safely from this place, May we give you praise and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. If you want to be baptized, don't forget the 28th. If you pray that prayer today, follow through with baptism. See me, see Julie, see Heather, see somebody. <coughs> Let them know that you want to be baptized. Bring a towel on the 28th and change your clothes. And we'll run you through the waters of baptism with everybody else. We're going to have baptized. So if you have any questions, you need a Bible, please see me. God bless you guys. Love you. Thank you for a great service today.